Today, in this video, we're going to read a storybook named Look, I Wrote a Book and You Can Too, written by Sally Lloyd-Jones and illustrated by Neil Layton. When you want to write a book, first you need a good idea. You can get one from your brain, your notebook, staring out of the window, people all around you, wherever you go. Basically, you can write any book you like, except here's what you have to know. Number one, what you're talking about. Once upon a time, there was a sausage osaurus. For instance, if you're writing a book about dinosaurs, but you don't know any good dinosaur names like Diplodocus, Triceratops, or Stegosaurus, or even how to spell Cretaceous, no one will believe anything you say. Here's what else you have to know. Number 2. Who it's for. If you're writing a book for your grandma, for example, but it's all about tractors and dump trucks, she will be snoring because it's not even interesting to her. You should write about things grandmas love, like the olden days or tap dancing or you. When I was a tiny baby, it seems just like yesterday. If you're writing a bedtime book for babies, you can't have scary monsters inside or they will be screaming, not sleeping. Plus, you can't use big words like fragile or hilarious. You have to use only small ones like blocks or bug. Next, you sit still and do quiet concentrating and get all your crayons in a row. You must also get a table, a pencil, your imagination, and a plan. Now, you need a title, which is what your story is called. Here are some good titles. How to take your penguin for a walk. This is called a how-to manual. Spiders on the ceiling. This is a horror story. Cleaning my room. This is a tragedy. When I was a baby. This is a history book. Only one shoe. This is a mystery. Here are some not good ones. How to change a diaper. A history of lettuce. Remember, your title must be appropriate. For instance, if your book is called Pretty Puppies, but inside are only horrible trolls, readers could be disappointed. Plus, you definitely need a story. Basically, a story has a hero like me. Something she wants, like maybe a horse. Something stopping her, like maybe a teacher or a baby or a criminal. Something happening, she spies a horse in a field. What goes wrong? The horse runs away. How she gets what she wants in the end? She finds the horse again and tames it and rides home. At last, you're completely ready to start writing. So how to write a beginning? Here's a bad beginning. First we stood up, next we sat down. That would definitely win. The most boring book ever praise. Here is a good beginning. Praying mantises have six legs and mandibles and eat their husbands. This is nonfiction because you absolutely didn't make it up. Or, a daddy had some children. One day he lost them. This is fiction because you made it up. Then you write the middle where all the stuff goes. The daddy was worried. He looked everywhere. Where could he have put them? After that, you write the ending which comes last. Suddenly, he found them. They were hiding in the closet. He was very happy. The end. 
If you want people to cry, you write a sad ending. Unfortunately, he didn't ever find them. He was very disappointed. The end. Always put the end so everyone knows the story is over. If you put to be continued, everyone has to read your next book. Now, have your juice and snack. You probably should have words and pictures in your book. If you have no words, some people might not know what's happening and say, I don't get it. And if you don't even have one picture, then it might send everyone to sleep. When you're finished, you can show your book to your friends and they might say things like, the baby's not very fascinating or I think we need more bunnies in here. Here's what else they might say. That was the most fantastic book ever. Are those bunnies or dinosaurs? Can there be a lightsaber? That was really long. Then you go away and draw better bunnies and cut the part about the boring baby just sleeping, which means you revise it, which means it gets even better. Now you stick the pages together and make page numbers. You must be able to count. Next, you draw your best picture with lots of colors in it and it goes on the front and that's the cover. Put your name there. On the back, you put what famous people thought of your book. Your friend's name goes here. Then. You make a beautiful portrait of yourself and underneath write about the author and give important historical facts like how old you are, how many sisters and brothers you have, your favorite color, if you have a pet, how many millions of cartwheels you can do without even stopping. Now you get people to buy your book. For instance, you could be friendly, Give them cookies, let them play with your trucks, tie them to your chair, and that's how to write a book and be an author. And then you just go back to being a normal person. Or you can start your next book, which is called a sequel, and write things like how to write another book, the return of the spiders on the ceiling, the daddy who lost his children again, the other shoe comes home to be continued.